Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on AWS Honeycode on IntelliPath. Do you know friends that AWS Honeycode is a low-code platform that allows users to create custom web and mobile applications without any coding knowledge. As more and more businesses are moving towards digital transformation, the demand for low-code and no-code platforms is expected to grow rapidly in the coming years. According to markets, the low-code development platform market is expected to grow from $13.2 billion in 2020 to $45.5 billion by 2025. As for salary, according to Payscale, the average salary for Honeycode developer in the United States is around $84,000 per year, with the potential to earn up around $134,000 per year with the experience and the expertise. The salary for Honeycode developer may vary on various factors such as location, company size, and job responsibilities. In addition to its current capabilities, AWS is constantly updating and expanding Honeycode's feature and integrations to make it an even more powerful tool for businesses. For example, recent updates include ability to create custom web and mobile application, as well as integration with AWS AppSync for creating real-time data application, as the platform continues to evolve and improve, the potential uses for Honeycode are nearly limitless. Overall, Honeycode is an innovative and promising platform with a very bright future. Its ability to enable users to build custom applications quickly and easily combined with its potential for career growth and competitive salary, making it an appealing option for businesses and developers alike. Now let's move on to the hands-on session. Now what basically Amazon Honeycode if I have to talk about is, so it is a tool using which we can deploy applications depending upon our use cases without writing even a single line of code. Now, you may find it similar to Sales, Salesforce and Zoho, but there is a slight difference in them. Salesforce, Zoho, all these things are CRM, which is Customer Relationship Management. But Honeycode is not only Customer Relationship Management, it is a Business Management tool. Now, if I go to the AWS console, there also I will be able to locate Honeycode. It will be similar, but very much different to what console we are getting here. Now, if I go to AWS and search for Honeycode, so you can see the same has been mentioned, build mobile and web apps without programming. If I go to here, it will definitely give me Teams domains. Now, what are these Teams and domains? So if I go back to Amazon Honeycode portal, you will see that here also I have Teams. So basically, if we create our Honeycode account with the same account that using which we have created our AWS account, then I will be able to create teams here over my AWS account and import the same over here. Basically, whatever teams I will be creating here will be displayed here. Next thing which we get is domain. So once we have imported our team in Honeycode, I can launch my website on a particular domain. And once I have launched that website on that particular domain, I will be able to see it from here. So basically, whatever app I will be deploying, the domain I will be linking over here. So once I have linked the domain over here to this app, using that domain, I will be able to see whatever app has been created here. So now, moving further, we have how we are going to use this Honeycode. So basically, for creating a Honeycode account, First thing which we have to do is go to AWS Honeycode, search for AWS Honeycode and here since Honeycode is still in beta version, there are few things that has not been working very well and are being created. So those are you can see quite few limitations. We will be discussing those limitations further. Now going with this in beta version, click on try for free so that we can practice our Honeycode tools, we can create our apps and we won't be getting charges for them. Now, this is here, click on try for free and you will be able to create your Honeycode account. Once your account will be created, you will be getting a similar portal like me. Now, in Honeycode, what you can do if I talk about that. So first thing, click on create app. Now, these are all the templates. Now, as I mentioned that Honeycode is a business management tool not only customer relationship management tool. So here you can see we have asset management, campaign manager, then we have event budget tracker, expense reporter, event project manager, 
event planner so these are all the templates that are available if you want you can sort them according to use like let's say if you are working for operations part inspection manager inventory system rfp selection asset management then we have inside marketing campaign manager event budget tracker event planner vendor management event project manager then inside human resource we have few templates sales and even product management but let's say if even if you are not satisfied with this much templates you can request a template from aws by clicking on this request a template now the next thing even you can use your own application like your own application can be created by you using your own workbook and all so let's explore this option use the classic builder now here we get this option that either I can use the templates available with AWS or I can import my own CSV table to create. Let's say if I'm going for creation of a workbook management or let's say a project tracker system. So I can basically what we do normally in classic scenarios, we create an Excel sheet, we write name of people, we write tasks assigned to them, we write what is the status of the task and we do fill these things manually. But here, all those things can be automated and can be converted into an app. So I just have to upload that sheet over here. If I want, I can create my sheet over here just by clicking on start from scratch. So let's say I click on start from scratch. Let's give it a name. Let's say project status and create. So now it will start creating a workbook from me. As you can see, workbooks has been added just below my apps. And now here I got this workbook. In this workbook, I will be writing the different columns i will be writing for whom the task has been assigned so let's say column one task column two assigned two then column three let's say status then column four let's say due date then column five let's say reporting two so now i have added these columns that what task has been assigned to a person what is the name of that person? What is the status of that task? What is the due date to complete that task? And to whom the person is reporting to the status. Now here I can mention the task. Let's say if I begin with a task, what is the very first thing? Let's say capital management. So this is the very first thing assigned to let's say a person A. Now status. If I want, I can fill it directly over here. But if I want, I can even leave it right now. We will be filling that later. Due date. If I want, I can fill it right now. If we want, we can fill it later on also. So due date, let me set it, uh, let's say 5 December 2023. Reporting to, let's say A is reporting to Z. Now, here you can see, as soon as I wrote this, it asked me to fix column format. And as soon as I click on this, it will set the column format to date. Here also, if I write, let's say 12 slash 7 slash 23. So this will be also date. So basically in this column, I can select dates. So let's select this entire column and you can see format date. So for this entire D column, the format has been set to date. Similarly, if I want the status. Here I will go here format. Now here format I will not go with auto. We will go with pick list. So pick list we don't want to go for any other table. So let's go with no source. So let it save the changes. So here let's go with new and table status. And let's say option one will be let's say pending. Option two, let's say completed and option three will be to be assigned or let's say not to be assigned to be shifted, which means this task will not be done by this person. It has to be shifted to someone else. And let's say this task waiting on resources. So which means that they don't have enough resources. They are waiting for the resources. So let's save as table and this table has been created table one status. So if right now, if I click on this, you can see pending completed to be shifted waiting on resources. If I select pending, pending will be mentioned. If I go with, let's say waiting on resource, waiting on resource will be displayed here. 
So like this, we can even select a pick list value. Similarly, if I want to reporting to, if I want to shift this that only these are my managers, you can only report to these particular managers. Here also I can go for format, then role link and pick list, pick list, we can go for let's say new reporting to, we have already Z edit. If I want, I can add another person, let's say Y will be my another manager and X will be my another manager. So you can only report to this three people. You can't report to anybody else apart from this three people. So like this, we have created a small workbook. Like let's now, once we have created our small workbook, you can see all the tables are also available here. So I will just rename this table, table one. And I will just mention project. So now we have three different tables created for our three different tasks. Now our tasks are available whom the task will be assigned to status due date as well as the reporting time has been mentioned. So now the next thing after this, once we have added these things, we have to convert this into an app. So I will just click on this builder and plus sign. So now this will use either we can create from scratch or you can use your app wizard. So if we will use our app wizard, we will have a benefit. I can directly create the app from our table. So click on choose table for table one project we are going to create. So table one project is our major table. So I will select this. So now you can see it has taken all the data that was available in our table one. So if I want to add, I will just click on this add button and will be able to add. Now what are the things that are allowed to be edited? If you want to set that, let's say task will not be edited status should be edited so I will select status so all the columns that we want to include if you want you can shuffle their places also we can just go like this assign to now the status is here assigned to his here next thing let's go to next and for the things that you want to allow to edit you just have to enable this make column edit table so task will not edit it, assign to, we want to edit it. Let's say assign to is editable. Due date, I don't want to edit it. Reporting to, I don't want to edit it. Status, I want to edit. Okay. So now these two columns will be editable. Rest of the things will not be editable at all. We won't be able to edit them. Then next. So you can see here, task, edit, status, edit. This will be our third screen from where if I want, I can share the project. Now let's click on done and let's check what are the things that has been created. So table one project has been created. If I click on add, it will take me to somewhere else. So if I want to view this app, I will just click on view app and it will open the app in a new console where I will be able to view this app. So if I click on add, I can add. Let's say the another task which I want to add will be say resource allocation. Edit value who will be allocating? B will be allocating. Now due date if I want to let's say resource allocation pending. Now due date due date will be let's say instead of May let's go for September 22nd September let's say. And reporting to B will be reporting to let's say X done. So now this row has also been added. But now you can see there are two empty rows. So if I click on this row, I can delete this row. If I click on this row, I can even delete this row as well. So the entire app has been automated for me. If I want to add something, I can very easily add. If I want to remove something, I can very easily remove. So let's click on done. And this will now show us how our app is looking. Now, if you want table one project detail, you can see how this will look. Table one project form, how this will look. This, how this will look. Now, if I go back here, let's select this one. So if you remember, I mentioned that only few things are editable, not all. So if we go with task, you can see task, I can't edit it. If I go to reporting to, Reporting to, I can't edit it. I can only see the details. But if I go back to resource allocation part, 
status i mentioned that assigned to and status can be edited the rest of the things now are not editable so if i click on here and say i select completed so now this will be marked as completed here as well but you can see it is not completed right now which means I can only delete this row. I am not able to change anything. So how we can save this thing? So for that, I will go back here. Now, which is the table? Table one project detail is giving me this thing. So I will go to table one project detail. Now here I only have this button delete row. So I will just shift this button a bit and I will click on add objects and I will get another button. Now this button I will click on and let's rename it to save changes. So now if I go back here, you can see a button is available with the name save changes. If I click it right now, nothing is going to happen. So how we can save the changes. So I will click on this button and go to actions. So now we have update screen, navigate to screen. So we don't have to write any formula. We will just navigate. To new screen now what will be that screen we will take it back to table one project okay so now as soon as i do this and let's go back here and click on save changes so you can see it is taking us back to this screen if i go on this waiting on resources and if i click on pending and then save the changes you can see i'm coming back to this screen so basically here since we have already written like not written, we have imported everything from the table itself. So that is the reason it is doing the things directly for us. So that is the reason we don't have to add any complex automation. We can directly change the screen and it will be done for us. So now coming back to the disadvantages. So first disadvantages, if I go here, you can see AWS Honeycode where it is existing. It is existing in Oregon region. If I want to change its region from Oregon to let's say North Virginia. You can see I won't be able to do that. Canada, I can't do that as well. What is the reason behind that? Basically, it is only available in Oregon region. So what will be the issue if you even implement it and you make it online using the domain? The reason like the basic issue that you will face will be that there might be some latency issues for the clients or for the team members who are working with you in the project. The next thing is if I go back to my project here and I try to add any object and if I want that there should be some image displayed on my app. So I won't be able to add any images. Now what is the reason behind that? It is still in beta mode and AWS Honeycode doesn't offer us any image adding feature. So that makes it quite behind others. But still, we can work with the same. So that's all for Amazon Honeycode. Just a quick info for all of you cloud enthusiasts. If you want to make a career in AWS, then you might want to check out IntelliPath's AWS Certification Training Course for Solution Architect. Learn from industry experts through hands-on session, projects, and case study. Reach us out to know more.